The last round of la la last round of la la last round of No one's burning kids' arms in the movies today. <laughs> Not like they used to. They have they find this blow up doll and it's already blown up and they have no problem just fucking around with it. And I'm thinking the whole time, that thing's probably it, there's a good chance it's got cum comes in it. Welcome to the last round of Horror Show It might be the last. Podcast. It might be the last. No, it's not. We got next month, at least. Um, I'm Frank. This is Jason. Uh, we're going to talk about some movies today. Up first, we're going to go back to 1987. A little movie called Slaughterhouse. Um, summary for this film. The owner of a slaughterhouse facing foreclosure instructs his obese and mentally disabled son to Maybe go obese. Why'd you have to include that? That's what the summary said. I didn't bring. I didn't bring it. I, I didn't write this. Uh, and mentally disabled son <laughs> to go on a killing spree against the people who want to buy his property. Written and directed by Rick Rossler. Rossler. Okay, what do you got? Buddy has a big axe to grind. A a big axe. <laughs> <laughs> distributed by American artists on 9 11 87. Wow. I'll never forget. On Blu ray, <laughs> 88 films, and more recently on uh, Vinegar Syndrome. Um, one thing I noticed right off the bat is how creatively this is shot. I assume most of the. You thought so? I thought, I think so. I think so too. Uh, I assume most of it was uh, from the hands, at the hands of experienced camera operator, first time cinematographer Richard Benda, who previous to, the, to this movie worked on several films, including Twilight Zone, the movie. So he's got, he's got like a. a no, I didn't great, dig that deep into this. Yeah. Um, unusual music choice to lay over actual slaughterhouse footage at the beginning. Uh, it, it, it worked perfectly to set a weird tone for this movie uh, after seeing you see p two people get killed like right off the bat. Um, for as low budget as this movie is, um, if you need vi visual evidence of their budget, uh, look at the police car. It, uh, <laughs> they bought it at a, lo a local auction for 500 bucks and it doesn't even look like uh, a police car at all, really. Did you think so? I don't remember. <laughs> um, yeah. I watched this one or I think early on in the month, I think. So it's been... Like, I think most people that review movies watch it and then, like, immediately... Yeah, <laughs> give a review. yeah. I wait 30 days. <laughs> this was a while back and I watched it, too. Uh, I want to know more about this actor, Don Barrett. Uh, he plays Lester Bacon. Uh, he's also in Hobgoblins and some movie called Desperation Rising, which looks fucking crazy. I'm, uh, uh, I, I'm gonna have to check that out. But he has a scar across his throat. Did you see that? Uh, I just want to know the story behind that. Uh, I, I'm, I'll never fucking know either because <clears throat> he's got to be dead first of all. Uh, I mean, the internet, I, I went on a long search on this movie because I was like, I want to know what happened. Because sometimes you can find shit like that out, you know, a uh, certain level of celebrity. Uh, really took too long on this Google search. <laughs> but uh, What happened? Hurry up. Uh, I love... Uh, you, your time's about up. <laughs> uh, whenever uh, his, his, his Buddy's father finds out he's killing people. Lester. Yeah. Uh, Which I think is a great character in this movie. Right. Um... He, his, I love his reaction. He's just like, why? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking great. Uh, enjoyable 80s synth pop soundtrack uh, by the band uh, Vantage Point. Um, and the original score by Joseph Garrison. Uh, one song called Hot Rod Devils by Ro uh, Rock and Billy. <laughs> they even play Mortician at the end of this movie. Did you hear that? They no, played the song Slaughterhouse. Mortician has a song called Slaughterhouse. Uh, straight up death metal at the end over the credits. Yeah, I don't listen to Mortician. Uh, <clears throat> I, I was, they're making this movie in this movie. These kids are. What a horrible, stupid pile of shit movie they're making. They've got these Halloween masks. It looks terrible. Um, <clears throat> I love the way they hey, use... You want like a cobra or something. <laughs> yeah, one's a Some snake. stupid cobra. <clears throat> uh, I love the way they use ADR to make a... Buddy sound like he's uh, a Yeti. 
<laughs> like they, they make it, the sounds this dude makes are fucking intense. Um, the one thing I loved about this movie is it just going back to the '80s, seeing some of the cars, uh, the Diet Pepsi can, <clears throat> the scenery of the time period. It's like comfort food uh, for me. And there's a lot of montages. <clears throat> if you like those, there's a clear, clear it. Clear it. It's, it's clear. <clears throat> Get you some big cake cola. Yeah. Uh, this movie went way past my expectations. I gave it an eight out of ten. When I was expecting to give it like a four or a five. Pretty good. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I didn't expect you to, to like it really at all. Uh, people bitch about the uh, pacing of this movie uh, and the editing. And they even uh, take shots on how it's shot. That's why I was surprised to hear you say it looks good because I, I think it looks good yeah, too. Yeah, I don't know. There's something about it. Yeah. Um, um, it's, a, it's a great setting. Like I yeah. love the I love the slaughterhouse, um, and it has uh, just has a tone to it, almost like uh, Texas Chainsaw. Yeah. Um, I don't I don't know. It's just between that having that that feel, the way it's shot. Um, I really like Buddy, uh, the Cleaver. That's yeah, good, that was a good weapon. He's he's intimidating. His weapons intimidating. Um, and Lester, I like I like his character. He has a like some good one-liners. Uh, adds a little bit of I guess there's kind of humor throughout throughout all of it. Like yeah. it has some funny, just funny lines to it. Uh, there's a lot of campiness to it. Very campy. Uh, really, some good on-screen kills. There's some off-kill or off-screen kills, which would have made it even better if he just put all of them on screen. Yeah. Um, like the music, the soundtrack. I recommend this to anyone who likes 80 slashers. I scored it an eight as well. That's a certified film. Yep. So I would say uh, check it out, Slaughterhouse. Out of the, those slashers that I'm going to recommend, this is probably towards the lower end of it. But still, yeah. great, still great movie. The tone, the feel, the look of it. It's good. It's beautiful. Um, up next, I want to talk about 1990s Blood Salvage. Summary for this film, twisted tale about a crazy preaching redneck named Jake who kidnaps people off the highway and performs sick medical experiments on them. He then proceeds to sell their organs on the black market to Mr. Stone. Everything is fine until he kidnaps the handicapped April and finds that she is harder to control than the others. Directed by Tucker Johnston, written by Chuck, <laughs> written by Tucker Johnston and Ken Sanders. Uh, tagline: If you, if Jake can't fix it, it's been dead too long. Uh, distributed by Magnum Entertainment, and at least that I know, of, like I'm sure there's some bootleg stuff. This don't have DVD or Blu-ray release. Yeah, it was. Uh, I watched this on. Unless I've overlooked it. I watched this on YouTube. I think I'm not sure. I'm not it's sure. on Prime, so if anybody yeah. wants to check it out, it's on there. Uh, cast highlights for this film. You got John Saxon, who you'll know from uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, Black Christmas. Oh, of stuff. Uh, Ray Walston, who you might remember from Popeye, uh, or Fast Times at Ridgemont High, Popcorn. And Evander Holyfield <laughs> is in this film. He's as, actually as himself. He's actually a producer on this film. No, he's not. Uh, he's got a credit. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I can't assume that this car with the spikes on the front, because there's this car, this dude rams this car into people and wrecks them. It has huge spikes on the front. That cannot be street legal, but the police officer that stops him from messing with someone's RV or something doesn't seem to fucking care about it at all. But that's definitely a Just problem. Don't mess with anyone's RV. <laughs> uh, the, the, the Vander Holyfield, uh, the th scene he's in, it's $500. You could win five hundred dollars if you went last three rounds with Evander Holyfield. Would you give that a whirl? Was it three rounds? Uh, was it? What I was it? I think it was even that. How long was anyway, it? Anyway, uh, for five hundred dollars. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. You'd fuck yeah. No, uh, there's no way. I would get it. I would go in the ring, but I'm not sure what that dollar amount is. <laughs> it's uh, there. This uh, fucking kid in this movie is one of those goddamn kids that when. 
he get, get you in fucking trouble. This kid just gets into shit. He gets out. He go, who does this? He's the cause of everything. He gets yeah. into everything. He's in there and fucking getting in their buildings. It's he's the cause for everything. The, everything but, that comes to him. That being said, the parents don't give a fuck. John Saxon is his dad. Doesn't give a fuck. They're sitting in the RV. This kid is running amok. <laughs> they just let him go. Um, this is a pretty. I thought this was a pretty original concept. Uh, uh, I don't think. Uh, do you think they're? I don't think they're directly ripping anything off necessarily. Have you seen this before? Yeah. Like a body farm with a religious kind of dude. Uh, uh, I'm not saying there's not anything original about it, but there's more that's not. Yeah. Oh, well, what did you think? It, what did it remind you of? Well, I, uh, I think. Well, again, this movie, except for this movie, has a goofier side of it. But it's like a. It has like a goofy. Texas Chainsaw. Yeah, definitely. Mixed with Hills Have Eyes. Okay. Mixed with Tourist Trap. Okay. Like, there's so many nods to different movies of this. That, like, at what point is it just a nod or is it a ripoff? Right. But it's also a kind of a spoof. Yeah. It's a horror comedy kind of spoofy. Yeah, there's definitely. Sense. So I guess if you're doing it that way, you don't. You can steal or whatever. You can get from other <laughs> movies, but. Yeah, uh, the, specifically, there the, might be some original. I, the characters, the characters did remind me of other people. Uh, there's this guy, uh, this uh, big dude named Roy, who's they, he reminds me of Frankie McDonald. Do you know who Frankie McDonald is? He's on YouTube. No. Okay. Well, I'm gonna play a clip of that no. right here, and uh, then everybody will know. Okay, guys, I'm gonna do a video about the guy eating 50 hot dogs at once. I'm cooking hot dogs on the barbecue now. Here's some ketchup and mustard and relish and onions. Here's the guy go. Upset. But he, he acts just <coughs> acts just like him. Hey, <laughs> I would say uh, I would say he's a I'd, he's the kind of character I wouldn't think that it, he would be a real thing unless I had seen Frankie McDonald. The other guy reminds me of uh, DJ Qualls. Do you know who that is? All right. Well, I'll put a picture of him up. I guess. Yeah, put him up uh, there. <laughs> it's uh, really odd how much focus they put on this handicapped girl, and they kind of just forget about the rest of the family. Like, I'm wondering what happened to the boy. Because they the last thing you see from him is they take his spinal fluid out, and then you don't ever see him again. And then they completely misuse uh, John Saxon. Um, like, they, where's he at? He should have saved the day. He got his ass captured back again. It, it, was, it was fucking stupid. Uh, <laughs> did you see that they had Elvis uh, captured at one point at the end? Who? They pan across as either Elvis or an Elvis impersonator. He's got sunglasses on, <laughs> and he goes, see it. Uh -huh. I heard the guy make <laughs> yeah, that noise, but yeah. I didn't notice he looked like Elvis. He did like an Elvis groan. <clears throat> Even though there really aren't any f effects or gore or big showy kills, uh, I enjoyed this movie for whatever reason. I thought, it was, Like I said, I thought it was a fairly original concept. Uh, but I gave it a 6 out of 10. I enjoyed the two brothers, and I thought they misused John Saxon, of course. We got some people uh, commenting up there. What's going on? I don't know. I've never done We're that live. Before. We're doing the live thing. Oh, it just says Gary and oh, yeah. Ray, Ray's watching. Ah, thanks for watching, guys. We're doing a live ah. video. Are we sideways? That's what I, I want to know. know. Um, anyways. Are they, tell us. Tell Are us. We sideways? Are we si Oh, they went away. <laughs> you scared them away. Oh, shit. Click out of here before they see what we're watching or else we got to stay for the whole thing. You don't have to stay for the whole thing. Jump in. Say what's up. Leave. Uh, All right, guys. I, I ain't got time for this. Uh, you got a review. I'm going to leave. <laughs> Blood salvage. Uh, yeah, so it's very much a, a comedy. It's campy. It's silly. <sighs> I can't believe you say it's a, it's original because everything like 
I just mentioned like three movies, but yeah. there's so many, so many different things uh, that kind of reference other movies. A um, few good kills, few good scenes. Um, it just it seemed to like go get serious at times. Mm-hmm. Like, see, all of a sudden it would take itself serious for five minutes, and then it would start doing some silly crap again. Unfortunately, on both of those fronts, it, it kind of messed with me. Um, and I got, I kept getting distracted. Mm-hmm. Like I, it could have been my fault, but I don't, I don't know. It just didn't hold my attention. Like I was getting easily mm-hmm. distracted. Like my, my mind kept wandering around. Uh, it's a little long, um, but I also like kind of like the spoof horror movies and I don't mind seeing stuff kind of influenced by other movies so it was middle of the road for me I gave it a five that's about right well uh, let's go into 1979 go back in time if you will Uh, don't go in the house summary for this film a disturbed young man who was burned as a child by his sadistic mother stalks women with a flamethrower Directed by Joseph Ellison, written by Joe Macefield, Joseph Ellison, and Ellen Hamill. Oh, I suppose you want me to say something? Oh. Uh, Tagline. If you do, then don't say we didn't warn you. Yeah. That's what a stupid thing. (laughs) (laughs) There's a whole bunch of stuff in there. Like, you could have said besides that. um, Distributed by Film Ventures International. And out on Blu-ray uh, through Ronin Flix. Um, this is one of those movies that I'm I'm surprised I haven't seen it yet. But I've seen the I've seen the the poster or I've seen the vi- the video or whatever. Uh, and I I would have never imagined in my life what it was actually about. I, who would have ever imagined that it was about a guy luring women into his home yeah, and burning it, them with a flamethrower? Looks like it would be a ghost story. Yeah, it, it, a haunted house. Um, there would be a fairly disturbing child abuse scene early in the movie if the act, the child actor would have been a little bit more intense. It was alright. And it there was, was some sort of effect. Though. It was effective. That, that was kind of a... Oh, I mean, I think it was a, it's a video nasty. Yeah. Or it was, you know. I think that's probably a lot to do with it. <clears throat> There's some child abuse stuff in this that... Yeah. Today. You don't see that kind of stuff today. Not at all. No one's burning kids' arms in movies today. <laughs> Not like they used anymore. to. Uh, it's almost like they can't decide which way fire affects this this guy. Because in the beginning, he almost lets the guy burn to death. The movie is about um, uh, yeah, a, kid, the, uh, a, a man who was abused as a child who builds a, his mother dies, and he goes crazy and just starts burning people. He builds a room in his house to burn women. He lures them in the house. Uh, But (laughs) it's almost like they can't decide which way it affects him because he he was afraid to help the guy who was burning. I don't think he was afraid to help him. You think he did it on purpose? Well, I think he's the one that threw the can in there. Oh, you think so? Yeah. Okay. Now we're making sense. I think he threw the can in there to blow up on that dude, and then he just sat there and watched him burn. Like he was talking about the flame was a cover, like the way the flame covered him. Okay, you got a point there. I'm, okay, it's in the movie. Uh, sort of a uh, a boring watch, a little bit. Uh, so slow. You get uh, over. Uh, you get to the, about the hour mark, and this guy's basically burned four women off screen, and one of them was dead already. Um, and the clothing is. Uh, <laughs> he goes shopping at one point. Did you notice how fucking ugly literally everything in that store oh, was? He went and got a suit. Yeah. I was like, good lord, you couldn't show me anything in this place. It was something uh, for a disco. Well, let's go to the right department. Yeah. Uh, The ending was dumb, I thought. The movie was boring, but proficiently made. Uh, They showed little to nothing actually happening, happening on screen, which was disappointing. And what little special effects were included were underwhelmingly bad, I thought. Uh, four out of ten. I didn't. I didn't dig it very much. Yeah, here. Um, <laughs> very sleazy, grimy movie. Yeah. Um, it's. It feels like they took Psycho and mixed it with Maniac. Mm. Um, both in the sense, the way that the film kind of ends. 
these charred bodies comes back to life. I don't know why you think that wasn't a good ending. <laughs> Those charred people walking around. It was basically, basically look my like main living, problem dead, with it was dead. I hated that he was just talking to these women. I didn't like his crazy. I didn't like that, that recipe of crazy. All right. And uh, like whenever the at the end, I was just touching on the ending. All I could think of was how, like, it seemed like a worse version of the, than the ending of uh, Maniac. It seemed like they took Maniac's you ending. Like that, I like Maniac's ending. It was like a worse version of that. Oop. Well, yeah, I agree. It's not yeah. as good as the ending of Maniac. <laughs> Maniac I compare everything, everything to Maniac. I'll be honest. <laughs> it's one of the best no, it's movies. just similar. You yeah. know, in yeah. a way. I, it's, uh, uh, I liked it. Uh, yeah, so Mama's Boy, who's crazy. Uh, we already said there's some disturbing scenes, child abuse going on. Uh, I thought there's not a lot of on screen kills. That's definitely where it, that's my biggest gripe with this. Uh, but you talk about the effects not being good. I thought it was one of the best kill scenes. When he takes that first girl in the room and just lights her on fire like it yeah but it they didn't really show good. anything on my version they didn't maybe i watched a different version than you oh so did you see the full frontal uh i can't remember like the the girl's bush was so no big. i did casting a shadow this is down what i'm leg. thinking i'm thinking that i watched I, whatever i want i watched this on um a vivo or some shit like that oh uh, shoot uh I think that the version I watched was edited, and I, I read that there was a few different versions well, floating around. You probably did. That's I, I really think, unfortunate because there isn't a lot of I think I might have got, I might have got a TV version because I swear to God, he says it was a great kill. He like, says she's hung up from, you know, she's strapped up to the ceiling, yeah, f fully nude, yeah, and walks in and just blasts her with this like okay, my flame see any, thrower, and then she just. It shows her just burning there. Yeah. I didn't like see screaming and that. burning. Like it's a brutal, I think it was a brutal kill scene. I, I, I remember when I was watching this, I looked down to see what it was rated and it said rated R. Yeah. And because and I did well, this early on because there's a scene at the beginning after he gets in trouble, he gets in trouble by his boss for not helping uh, that guy. And the guy, and his boss comes in and I swear to God he said uh, cocksucker or motherfucker, but they switched it to some other thing. I think it's Motherfucker. Yeah, but they switched it to some other thing. So, okay, so yeah. you watched something. I watched, uh, like, a TV version. Yeah, I mean, I didn't think I... Yeah, he must have. Because I don't think, like, mine's some special director's guy. In fact, this is a bare-bones DVD. Like, oh, there's yeah. not even a menu. You stick it in and <laughs> it plays. Start going. <laughs> uh, where was I at, though? Oh, yeah, so, Brutal Kill. Um, it's a little slow. You need more on-screen kills because he ends up having... A circle of charred bodies yeah. that he's burnt. Like I want to see the first one was that good. Like I don't even care if you repeat it four times. Like yeah, that's a good scene. Um, a solid movie. I don't think it's anything you have to see, but I give it a seven. Yeah, I guess you know. And I was sitting there thinking, like the only thing that would make it, the thing that was keeping it from being good, is on-screen kills. But if they would have had at least one that was good i don't know but the ending was like i said for me whatever <laughs> let's go to 1987 i think this thing's even still working yeah it's going no one's watching now no. uh page what <laughs> whatever <laughs> people have lives they'll check it out later there's, uh, there's five people that's on the, <laughs> on the group page <laughs> what happened to james ray is he go still through guy? there and and tag everybody no just get rid of everyone except for the, the people, dead that, people that comment those are like 400 members no yeah. there's not yeah. there's 10 of us shadow everyone members. else is gone get them out of here <laughs> let's go into 1987 <laughs> ah. slumber party massacre 2 summary for this film courtney bates the younger sister of valerie and her friends go to their con go to their condo for a weekend getaway, but Courtney can't get rid of the haunting feeling that a supernatural rockabilly driller killer is coming to murder them all. Written and directed by Deborah Brock. Uh, what do you have? Tagline, thrills, chills, and guitar drills. Distributed 
by New Concord on October 16, 1987. Uh, out on Blu-ray through Scream Factory in 2017. It's out of print. Uh, it is two and three. Anyway, people are starting to want more money than I was willing to pay. I've never seen two. And I still haven't saw three. So I, I really hope that three carries on this tone because I liked I liked this movie. <laughs> I don't think it. I don't think it's the same tone. <laughs> uh, cast highlight for this film: Crystal Bernard. You'll remember her from Wings. She played Helen, and she uh, she looks good in this movie. They so, all look good. Uh, in this movie. Uh, 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 yeah, that's true. Well, one of them is a Playboy. Uh, yeah. She was actually no. She was in Playboy. I heard someone someone commented she's the only one like the only one in this movie that doesn't show her tits. Yeah, she had a contract. She's the one you want to see. Yeah, she has a. Um, Am I black? And oh black. God, he's gone. He's gone. Come back. He's there. He is. Okay. Anyways, um, yeah. A little trivia here. Uh, there's a lot of homages. <laughs> in this movie uh, you, you got your office, uh, police officers Kruger and Voorhees uh, Courtney's last name is Bates the neighbors from the original have been renamed the Cravens instead of the Devereaux um, one of the main characters is named Sally Burns because of Marilyn Burns who played Sally uh, on Texas Chainsaw Massacre uh, here's another little funny thing The girl, there's one girl that wears um cut off jean shorts uh, she noticed that her shorts kept getting shorter every day with the shooting it was because the the uh, costumer would pull threads out every night yeah, little by little <laughs> you can notice it if you pay attention you can notice it huh. uh, <laughs> the intro to this movie is awesome uh, then there's this band practice scene I don't know about you, but it felt like a scene from Saved by the Bell, but not as good as the Zack attack. So, you got that. This, uh, this group of girls is driving upstate to a condo to practice. Uh, the, they're in a band. They're in a band. Uh, they have a guitar cabinet tied to the top of a fucking uh, station wagon. It'll make it. How do, I want that scene. I want to see them. I want Josh to, Palmer. Josh Palmer. How but are who you? Knows? Who knows it? On the live. Who knows it? Are we sideways? Am I sideways? Can you see me? <laughs> Can you see you anymore, Frank? No, uh, coming up my notifications. Put some band-aids on him. <laughs> Essentially, Crystal Bernard's character is hallucinating through this whole fucking movie. Um, she keeps thinking there's this rockabilly guy. First of all... I. The guy from the first movie was like, I, I remember him being like, kind of like the guy that would be your friend, your dad's friend that your mom hated. Uh, and he wore a jean jacket. And that was it. And he was kind of boring. And the coolest thing about him was he used that big drill. This guy is fucking completely different. He's like a rockabilly. Uh, he's, he's got the most elaborate kill tool I've ever seen in my life. A uh, giant guitar with a drill on it. Uh, I think it's a multi-neck guitar or something. It's big. It's huge, right? No, the body's huge. <laughs> it's very... It's fucking ridiculous. Um, it's not practical. Yeah, but there's a... be too heavy to wear. Just like... <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> just like the first movie, there's like a, a... They have this ridiculous sleepover party where they make the biggest stupid fucking dumb mess in this girl... I would, I would go nuts if... Can you imagine your kids just fuck your whole house up? They tear pillows apart. And they got pillows in the jelly, pill feathers in the jelly. That bothers pillows me. Pillows in the jelly. <laughs> pillows in the jelly. Pillow pillows. Um, yeah, but the, the dance sequence where they wreck the place is fucking crazy. Um, yeah, like, like I said, the killer from the first movie isn't nearly this cool. Uh, they have they find this blow up doll, and it's already blown up, and they have no problem just fucking around with it. And I'm thinking the whole time, that thing's probably... It, there's a good chance it's got cums, cums in it, you know? That, that, it's probably going to be cums. cums. It's probably, that, that girl's <laughs> brother was probably coming in that thing. Oh, man. Uh, whenever There's a scene where 
uh, Crystal Bernard hallucinates that there's a hand in her hand hamburger, her hand burger. Uh, that made me laugh because they edited it. And it looked like the guy was playing pranks on her, this rockabilly dude. It, I was laughing my ass off through this whole thing. Especially at the, there's a character named TJ. He can improve almost any movie, I think. Uh, just his delivery. I don't know if he's, he's in Slaughterhouse. So, I don't, he, I think he's one of the kids that gets killed at the beginning, but uh, he's in Pumpkinhead too. Uh, his name is Joel Hoffman, so check him out on the IMDb. <laughs> Uh, th I thought this movie was fun. I, I loved how they took this really pedestrian killer from the first movie and turned him into like a, a rockabilly guy that has Freddy Krueger powers, evidently. Uh, he just appears eventually out of her dreams. Um, I could have done without the big musical number that they had, <laughs> but it kind of gave it a Tim Burton feel. Um, I gave this a 9 out of 10. I liked it a lot. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, so 80s comedy musical slasher uh, I never heard heard good things about this mm -hmm. so I always stopped at the first one I figured <laughs> if the second one's that bad you know the third one's not going to be any better so I always stopped at that one uh, it's fun it's entertaining it's silly it's crazy uh, and it works on many different levels it does have a strong nightmare feel to it like, yeah him being in the dreams and, and some of the colors coming out of the dreams yeah. um the officer kruger uh the acting is what it is it fits the tone of the movie uh it, but yeah good music good color lighting there's fog uh the, the kills are good are good in it there's not really much gore but there's another disgusting pus scene yeah i hate pus <laughs> and i don't even like to say it uh, cool weapon. I like the uh, guitar drill. One complaint is it's, it's slow. It starts to pick up at the 50 minute mark, um, but it's not a deal breaker because so many other things are working on this. Like I said, there's different many levels to this movie. Um, I gave it an eight. Hey, that's certified. I recommend both the first and the second. So. The third has the. Offer. I mean, it might, be, it might yeah. have something special here, and I don't even know. I'll tell you. I'll tell you why I think it's so good. There are several moments where I was like, I hate what's happening right now, and it's every time that the band, the girls' band, plays. I hate all of that, and I really hate when they intercut the people just banging on the drums and stuff. Yeah. That sucked. Yeah. But everything else makes up for it. So. But that's an episode, so uh, yeah. Boom. Thanks. For we had three, uh, three people try three to join people. us, I guess. Yeah, we're gonna go live here again in a, in a yeah, little bit. I'm gonna stop this. Yeah, yeah. I think, the I think we're sideways anyway. Sideways. Finish it on you. Yeah, I look like shit. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for everything, guys. Yeah, it really means a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, thanks for everything. You guys mean the world to us. <laughs> That's not nice, Jason. Yeah, it is. They know what's in all good fun.